you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Oh, hallelujah, God. You are great and greatly to be praised, God. Oh, God, we magnify your name, oh, God. Hallelujah, God. And God, even as we prepare, oh, God, to go before your throne, oh, God, to go before your word, oh, God, we ask you, God, that you speak, oh, God, as only you can, oh, Lord. Send your word, oh, God, with power and demonstration, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke the hand of the enemy, God, that try to come against your people, oh, God. Greater is he that's in us, oh, God, than he that's in the world, oh, God. You said, behold, how good and how pleasant it is, O oh God, for brother to dwell together in unity, God. You said you inhabit the praises, God, of your people, O oh Lord. So, God, even as we praise you here now, God, thank you, Lord Jesus, God, for being in our midst. Thank you, Lord Jesus, God, for dwelling amongst us. Thank you, O oh Lord Jesus, God, for your presence being here, O oh God. And I thank you, Lord, that even as you're here, God, you're meeting every need, O oh God. Even as you're here, O oh God, you're touching everybody, God. Even as you're here, O oh God. Every need, oh God, amongst your people, oh God, I thank you. You're meeting it now in Jesus' name. You're meeting it now, oh God, in Jesus' name. You're meeting it now, God, in Jesus' name. So I thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you and we give you the glory. We give you the praise. We thank you, God, for everything you've done, God. We thank you, God, for everything you're doing. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And we anticipate, God, your move, oh God, as only you can, oh God. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, but continue to give God a praise because we're in this house. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord. We're in your house, oh Jesus. So, Lord God, we honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we thank God for each and every one of you being with us on today. We give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who has spared each and every one of you, and you're here today because of his goodness and his grace and his mercy. We thank God just for each and every one of you being here with us. We give honor, obviously, to our pastor and to our first lady and for the work that God continues to have them doing in the ministry. We thank God for each and every one of you. You could have been anywhere on this Sunday, but you're here with us on today, and we thank God for you being here on today. Can you give the person next to you a hand? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank God for every person that is watching and will watch uh, this broadcast on today. Uh, we thank God for what he's doing. We're in the house of breakthrough. And we believe that he can still and is still breaking through barriers in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so we just thank God for each and every one of you being here on today. I'm so happy to see uh, see my brother and my sister. Said so can ask it's Thank God for you being here. So good to see you. I just thank God just for everything he's doing and then continues to move. Uh, I just give him the glory and the honor and pray that God continues to bless you. I just thank God just for each and every one of you. Amen. 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 I know you all have had busy weeks and we're in the middle of the summer and some people are vacationing and some people are home and some people will be watching. We just thank God for each and every member of our breakthrough family and continue to pray for them, continue to keep up with them, continue to make sure that, you know, even those who are here or are not here, make sure we're keeping up with them and letting them know that we love them and that we're praying for them. We are better together. Amen. 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 I don't want to take too long. Uh, if you have your Bibles, if you could turn to Acts, the 12th chapter. And I'll be reading the first through the 11th verse. Um, I don't plan on being before you long. In fact, I struggled a little bit last night while I was working on it because I looked at my word count and I said, this is nowhere near what I normally do. So I just felt the need that I needed to add something. And the Lord was like, nope, that's all I gave you. So I'm just let y'all know. Y'all might blink and I'll be done. I'm just letting you know. Um, so I don't plan on being before you all very long on today. I had to fight that urge to try to fit something in. I was like, no, I'm going to do what the Lord gave me. And then we'll be done, okay? Amen, amen. So we're at Acts chapter 12, the first through the 11th verse. And I'm going to start reading it, and I'm going to read in the New Living Translation. I'm going to highlight a couple of key phrases, and then we're going to go from there. It says, about that time, King Herod Agrippa began to persecute some believers in the church. He had the apostle James, John's brother, killed with the sword. When Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish people, he also arrested Peter. 
This took place during the Passover celebration. Then he imprisoned him, placing him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. Harold intended to bring Peter out for public trial after the Passover. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. Say prayed. Pray. Say prayed. Pray. Say prayed. Pray. Verse 6 says, the night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep, fastened between two chains, between two soldiers. Say chains. Pray. Say chains. Pray. Say chains. Pray. Others stood guard at the prison gate. Suddenly there was a bright light in the cell, and the angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side to awaken him and said, quick, get up. Say, get up. Get up. Yo, get up. Get up. Say, get up. get up. And the chains fell off his wrist. Then the angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals. And he did. Now put on your coat and follow me. Say, follow me. Follow me. Say, follow me. follow me. Say, follow me. The angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel, but all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was actually happening. They passed through the first and second guard posts and came to the iron gate leading to the city, and this opened for them all by itself. So they passed through and started walking down the street, and then the angel suddenly left him. Peter came to his senses. It's really true, he said. The Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod, and from what the Jewish leaders had planned to do to me. I'm going to talk to you very quickly from the subject, get up. Turn to the person next to you and say, neighbor, get up. Tell the next person, say, neighbor, get up. So I'm going to talk to you about get up and tell the person next to you, the shackles will fall. I thank you, Lord God, for what you want to declare on today. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know, have y'all ever walked into a room? I know this is something that has happened for us before, that if y'all walked into a room and immediately when you smell it, you're like, ooh, something is not right in this room. It's a diaper, something has fell, something has crawled in the mist and died. I'm not quite sure, but something stinks in here. And there was a person who was in that room at the same time and they don't smell anything. And you're like, did you smell this? This room smells awful. And you're like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't smell anything. There's actually something scientific behind it. What actually ends up happening is that when you first enter into a room, the receptors of the smell is going off. So you really smell it. But the longer you're in there and the more your brain realizes that it's not a threat, the receptors turn off. So this what happens is what we actually call nose blindness. And in nose blindness, what ends up happening is that you end up losing the smell of what happened. You actually begin to adopt to the smell of what's in the room. One thing I want to talk to us today about is our ability to adapt to things that we really should not be adapting to. We become used to adapting to so many things. And there are scientific methods that show how your body gets used to adapting to things. I actually read online and I saw that over the course of 14 days, it takes your body 14 days to adjust to working out in hot temperatures. So if you go outside and you're used to running and it's 80, 85, 90 degrees and you're working, it takes your body on average 10 to 14 days to adjust to that. You start to sweat differently. Your body starts to produce fluids differently to adjust to the temperature. Also, if you've ever been to high places like Colorado or in the Rockies and you people start working out there, they start running in the mountains. It takes your body on average 200 hours to adjust to working out in altitudes. Who in here has ever tried a diet? And you try it for like two days, it didn't work. You try it for three days, it didn't work. You try it for four days, it didn't work. On average, it takes your body five to six weeks to adjust to any diet. So your body does adjust, but it does eventually take some time. And why am I bringing this up? I'm talking about how important it is to realize that at times your body learns to adjust to what has been around. And sometimes we put ourselves around things that aren't good and we stay there long enough and long enough and long enough. And now suddenly what used to bother us doesn't even bother us anymore. Suddenly things you would not tolerate being in your presence. Now stuff is just whatever. It's just it can happen right in front of you and you don't even breathe. It used to be at one moment you couldn't stand to hear that. You couldn't stand to watch that. It bothered your spirit too bad. But now it's happened so much. It does not even, doesn't even register with you. Your body has adapted to your situation. And sometimes there are things that we've learned, that we've learned to adapt to that we shouldn't adapt to. We've taken some things and made it normal that probably shouldn't be. 
I saw a study that said that uh, for people who play video games, and this hit me because I play video games, for people who play video games, on average, they play about 20 hours a week. And there are some young people who play up to 50 hours a week of video games. So that's 50 hours, 20 hours a week of playing video games. There are some people who look on their cell phone an average of 58 times a day. They look on their cell phones 58 times a day. Now contrast that with the average Christian reading their Bible seven minutes a week. The things we have allowed to become our normal, that we have normalized looking at a cell phone, we've normalized looking at video games, but we have not normalized spending time in our word. We haven't normalized spending time in worship with him. Now that becomes the awkward thing. We've normalized doing everything else but spending time with Jesus. And what happens when that becomes our story? We see so many times situations where there are people who are in abusive relationships and they become used so much to that abusive relationship that they continue to stay in that abusive relationship. I remember one time I was in a situation and I saw a couple fighting, fist fighting. So I had never seen nothing like that before. I jumped in out pulling people to the side and I'm telling them, go, go, just get out, get out. I don't know, call the police. Go, go, go. And I'm doing, this is like traumatic for me. How many of y'all know 15 minutes later, they went to McDonald's together. I said, you know what? I ain't doing this again. But sometimes the behaviors that might seem traumatizing to us has become normalized. And it's not even that a big deal. When you're looking at it in your situation, you're like, I'm not used to this. I didn't grow up seeing that. I praise God. I didn't grow up seeing a bunch of mess. So when I saw that, I was ready to jump in. But for them, that was just normal. And I didn't recognize that. So why am I bringing up all this? Because the one thing the Lord was sharing with me is that there's so many in the body of Christ that has normalized bondage. We have normalized slavery. We have normalized being bound. We have normalized being enslaved. We've normalized being in chains. Y'all see this? A couple of years ago, the Lord uh, led on my heart. We went to the AIM convention a couple of years ago, and the Lord told me to walk around the AIM convention that entire day in these chains. And I thought it was very strange, but I did what the Lord told me to do. The first thing I got there, I was teaching the young men of valor. So I taught the young men of valor class. There's 30 or 40 young men in there. I taught the whole class in these chains. And the Lord showed me there are so many people who are in positions of authority, but they're still bound. There's so many people that think because they, they got a title, everything's good to go. But you can be, have a title and still be bound. You can be teaching and still be enslaved. You can be uh, high, high class and still high bound. And so one thing the Lord showed me is that we have become experts in talking about a freedom we're not experiencing. We can talk about it so much, but at the end of the day, are we truly experiencing the freedom we're talking to other people about? Because we've become bound and we've become used to our chains. We have normalized our oppression. So that class ended and now it's service is starting to begin and I want to sit in the back, but they made sure I got in the pulpit. So here I am on the pulpit in these chains, which lets me know it doesn't matter where I'm sitting. I can still be sitting in the highest of highs and still in chains. I was up there doing the offering, doing the offering in the chains. Because the one thing the Lord let me know is that you can have a three piece suit on and still be in chains. You can have the high dress on and still be in chains. You can be saying, praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, give God the glory and the honor and still be in chains. So then the, the service ended and now I'm going to lunch. And as I'm going to lunch, I'm sitting in line and the youth are looking at me like I got three eyeballs. Like what in the world is this dude walking around with all these chains for? Can you please explain this to me? Can you please tell me what's going on? And the one thing I notice is that we've become so good at looking at other people's chains. But we don't recognize our own chains. We become so good at looking at what other people got going on. Why is it sometimes the last person you see is you? And it's amazing how they saw that but couldn't see what was holding themselves back. They couldn't see what was holding their own issues and their own stress. And so here you are in the situation where we have normalized our oppression. But one thing the Lord told me today is that today you can be free. 
we are still in the breakthrough business. God is still breaking chains. He is still setting the captives free. It did not stop back then. He still has the ability to heal, to deliver, and set free. You don't have to be bound if you don't want to. And what God is showing me is that today is the day when you can take off the chains. One thing the Lord showed me, and he gave me this analogy, and what was ended up happening was, um, we talk about in 1 Samuel 17, and you read 1 Samuel 17, and it's David, and David is talking to Saul, and he's saying to Saul that I'm going to take out the children of Israel, I'm going to take out Goliath, because Goliath is uh, basically taunting the people of Israel, and David said, I'm going to take him out, I'm going to do, I'm going to do what the Lord tells me to do, and Saul agrees. What does Saul do? He gives him his armor, gives him his helmet. Says about bronze helmet and a coat of mail. He tries to put it on. He tries to walk with it. And David said, I can't operate like this. I can't wear this. I have to take it off. And what the Lord was letting me know is that there's some Goliaths in your life that are ready to be defeated. But you're still trying to wear Saul's armor. You're still trying to wear his attitude. You're still trying to wear that bad mindset. You're still trying to take on his worldview, his customs, his attitudes. And some of us need to take some of this stuff off. Because God is waiting on us to take off Saul's armor so he can give us exactly what we need to take on the Goliath in our life. How long will we continue to wear Saul's armor? How long will we continue to wear that stuff that doesn't belong to you? We've gotten used to it. We may have had it for a couple of days. We may have had it for a few hours. We may have had it for a few years. Some of us have had it for a lifetime. God is ready to take it off. He's ready to take it off today. This is your day of deliverance. This is your day where he's ready to set people free. Take it off in Jesus' name. Turn to protect you. Say, take it off. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Take it off. I don't want to leave with anything I wasn't supposed to wear. We used to watch Dragon Ball Z back in the day, and Goku would be training, and then he would, we didn't know this, but when he would take off his shirts, his shirts would be weighted. And suddenly he could punch faster. And suddenly he could kick faster. And suddenly he could do all these things he couldn't do before. you become so used to your weights. But let me tell you, it's going to be so different when God sets you free. You're not going to realize how much better you're going to be able to run. You don't even realize how much more you're going to be able to praise him. You don't even realize how much more you can be able to give him the glory. You don't even know your own strength because you're bound. But God is ready to set the people free on today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's get to the passage because I'm already almost done. So here we start in chapter 12, and Herod has, has uh, started at persecuting the body of Christ. The church has been moving. The church has been advancing. And now Herod has turned around, and he has killed one of the apostles. It was popular politically. So now he's gotten Peter. And he's gotten Peter, and he has locked him up, and he's placed him in these chains, and he's got him placed away. And Herod thought he did everything he could do. But one thing Herod could not stop was prayer. He may have had him chained. He may have had him bound. He may have had him between two soldiers. But one thing I know that Jesus is that prayer can get through any situation. Prayer can get through any trial. Prayer can get through anything that the devil is trying to hold you back. There are some people who don't believe prayer works. But let me let you know that prayer still works. He is still a deliverer. My mind goes to what David said in Psalms 27. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He said, when the wicked, even the enemies of my foes come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fail. Let me tell you, in 2021, oh my, I can tell you, the Lord is his light and his salvation. I don't have to fear the Lord is the strength of my life. I don't have to be afraid. I can praise him in a pandemic. I can give him the glory and the honor regardless of what the devil throws in my face. I may be hard pressed on every side, but I'm not in despair. I may be wounded, but I'm not forsaken. I may be cast down, but I'm not destroyed. We serve a mighty God, and he can come through like nobody else. He can come into any situation, break through whatever situation, and come in and make and bring deliverance to your house. I remember when, let me tell y'all this. I can tell y'all this testimony. I didn't even tell him to talk about it. I probably already said it before. I know me and TT, we were starting, uh, obviously, we start starting Indy off in daycare. 
And daycare is, you know, the, I love daycare, but the price, my God, it's more than a mortgage. It's absolutely ridiculous. What's the point? What is the point? And so the Lord knew exactly what we needed. So my wife said, they're saying, we're praying. We're praying for raise. We're praying for increase. We're praying for promotion. I'm like, okay, baby. Okay, baby. I'm praying for it. But I've been at this job for six years. I know how it works. They get your numbers. They put your numbers together. There's two times a year they, they go for promotions. They go for promotions in February, and they go for promotions in September. So my prayer is, okay, God, I'm going to put the work in. I'm going to work really hard and pray that we can get this raise in September. If I pray and I believe and we work hard, we can get the raise in September. And Tissy's praying for pray raise right now. And I'm like, babe, it's April. Ain't no raises coming in April. They come in September. If I work hard and put my numbers in, that's when the raise is coming. So I'm going to pray. I'm praying. Teacher say, I'm praying for a raise right now. I'm like, babe, it's April. They don't give no raises right now. So I'm up here working. And as I'm working, I get a call from my manager. Now I'm scared because I'm working from home. I'm scared. My manager said, we need, I need to call you. So I call you. Okay, she picked up the phone. I'm like, okay, so uh, I just want you to know, JP, we were talking, and we decided to give you a raise. It's April. Y'all don't give out raises in April. <laughs> Y'all give your raises in February and September. But I want you to know if God is going to do it, He don't care what time of the month it is. He don't know when the schedule is. It doesn't matter. I want you to know that thing came right in hand in the name of Jesus. The Lord knew exactly what we needed and when we needed it. He didn't matter. He didn't wait till September. I'll give you what you needed right now. I said, my God, I said, I'm not supposed to have the raise yet. It ain't September yet. But God still came in. He still made raise out of no way. Companies don't give out money. I didn't ask for one. They just gave one out. Look how God does. Look how God does. So I want y'all to know that prayer works. Hallelujah. So here they are in the situation. And they are, um, and as we know, Paul, uh, Peter is chained up. And he's in these chains. And as he is chained up, the angel of the Lord comes. And as the angel of the Lord comes, he taps him and says, get up. And as he gets up, the scripture says, the chains fall. Just fell off him. Now, the one thing I was wondering, and I could look at the scripture, I was like, okay, did he get up and then the chains fell? Or did the chains fall and then he got up? The scripture doesn't make that clear. All we know is that there is, in the same time, him getting up and the chains falling, which shows that there is a relationship between walking in obedience and God opening doors. He told him to get up. And what if Peter's like, I ain't getting up nothing because I got these guards here. We got these doors here. This probably ain't even real. This probably just a vision. I'm just going to go back to sleep. No, he heard the angel say, get up, and he got up. And now chains are falling. And now doors are opening. And now he's passing through guards. He's passing through places he's not supposed to pass through. But what happened? He walked in obedience. That's why the scripture says you have to be willing and obedient. He placed the attitude before the action. Because he knew if your attitude wasn't right, the action wasn't going to happen. He said, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. And now, as they walked in obedience, victory came. As they walked in obedience, breakthrough came. As he walked in obedience, deliverance from death came and hit him in his house. He was scheduled to go to trial and be executed the next day. And God stepped right in. And brought deliverance. And as he did it for Peter, and as he's done it in our house, he'll do it in your house if you will let him. If you'll be obedient and get up out of the mess. Get up out of the situation. You know, we, we could be like Naaman and just dress it up. And look all good and say all the right phrases and still be bound. And still be in chains. And still be enslaved. We could hide it. I could cover it up. I could put a suit over it, but I'm still in chains. God's ready to set free on today. If you want to be set free, God is saying, get up. Get up out of your situation. Get up out of your mess. Stop believing that that is a part of you. You know one thing I noticed? I'm going to say this and then I'm done. 
I, I totally left my notes. I'm done. Sometimes, have you noticed sometimes we'll have behaviors, we'll have issues, we'll have things in our lives, and we'll just say, that's just who I am. I'm so used to it. That's just how I am. This is just me. That's just me. You know what you're saying? You're saying that that issue has become so attached to you, it's become like an arm. It's become like a limb. We got blood vessels connected. We might got bones connected. We might got, it, it might be asking, it's just, it's just as much as part of me as my arm. It's as much a part of me as my right hand. And you know what Jesus said about that? He said, if your right hand offend you, cut it off. He said, because it's better for you to go to heaven with one hand than to hell with two. Don't allow your issue to keep you bound. No matter how long it's been there, he's ready to set us free. Who's ready to be set free on today? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Oh, Lord, set us free on today. We don't want to be bound. We don't want to be chained. We don't want to be enslaved. We don't want to hide it. We don't want to ignore it. We want to deal with it even on this day. Hallelujah, Jesus. It may not be comfortable. It may be weird. It may make us not feel right. But God, we're going to walk in your deliverance. We're going to walk in your breakthrough. We're going to create a new normal in the name of Jesus. And our issue will no longer be our normal or today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. There are things that we're going to lay down on today in Jesus' name. It will not be our normal. It's a decision between you and God. Thank you, Jesus. No, nobody needs to lay hands on you because it's a decision between you and God. You have to get up. You have to get up. We can't prop you up. You've got to make the decision that I don't want to be in this mess anymore. And if you make that decision, he'll bring the breakthrough. The chains will fall, but you have to get up. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Set us free, oh God. Let us walk in your will and your way, and we give you the glory and honor. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, somebody say, get up. Come on, somebody say, get up. Come on, you got to get up this morning. Come on, lift those hands up. Say, I'm lifting them up. I'm getting up. I'm coming out. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. You got to get up out of where you are. I heard the Bible say over in John chapter 5, the Bible said the man who was sick on his bed, Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. Come on, somebody say, get up. You got to do what the Lord said. Get up, somebody. Hallelujah. Say, I'm coming out. Hallelujah. Get up. I'm coming out. In the name of Jesus. Didn't the Bible? I heard the Bible says, and the ten lepers, the Lord said, as they went to, he said, go show yourself to the priest. Did he not tell the ten lepers to go show yourself to the priest? The Bible said Jesus did not lay hands on any of them. He didn't do any. He didn't pray, but he said, go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible said, as they went, you got to get up and start to move, people of God. Come on, lift your hands and say, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Hallelujah. I don't have to stay where I am. Don't have to stay depressed. Don't have to be oppressed. Hallelujah. I lift my hands unto the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible said, as they begin to move, as they begin to do as the Lord said, my God, the healing took place. In the name of Jesus, he said, get up. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, I'm getting up this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Oh, we praise him. We honor him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank God for the word of God this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, get up. Mm, we thank God and we praise him for what the Lord has done, what he was spoken to us on this day. Peter said, listen, Peter had changed. The Bible said the shackles fell off of him. And the shackles will fall off on us if we don't let them sit here and just get too complacent in where we are. We become numb to the fact 
that we've had them so long. And the Lord said, this is not who I made you. Come on, somebody, let's let the shackles fall today. The shackles are fall today. I heard the Bible declares over in Hebrews 12 and 1, let us lay aside every weight. Come on, somebody say, I'm laying it aside today. Come on, do like this. Begin to shake it off. Say, I'm shaking off these shackles. I'm taking, shaking off these weights. I'm shaking off everything that's trying to hold me back. God didn't, God didn't give me a spirit of fear. I'm shaking it off today. Hallelujah. I heard the Bible say, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that we so easy beset us and let us run this race with patience. Come on, somebody. I say, I'm shaking it off. I'm shaking it off. I got to be like Paul when the supper bit Paul. Paul, the Bible says, he shook it off. In the name of Jesus, they thought by God. You got to shake some stuff off. Somebody ought to say, shake it off. Shake it off. Hallelujah. Shake it off this morning. Oh, we praise God. We honor him for who he is. For what the Lord has spoken today. Get up. And the shackles will fall. My God, if you get up, the shackles will fall. But if you sit there, they'll stay right there on you. You got to begin to move like the Lord told them, those uh, lepers as they went. The Bible said they didn't get the healing standing there. But when they begin to move, every step they took, they, they received healing. Every step towards the priest, they received healing. And then the Bible said only one came back and said, Lord, I thank you. Jesus said, didn't I not heal not 10 of you, but only one had the audacity to come back and tell me thanks. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you this morning. I'd be the one to tell God, thank you. I won't just get a blessing and walk away and not tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. I'd be that one to say, thank you, Lord, for doing that. I'd be the one to say, God, I thank you for healing me. I thank you for delivering. I thank you for opening up doors. Hallelujah, Lord. He said, get up in the shackles of fall. In the name of Jesus, anybody believe in God for the shackles to fall, perhaps in your finances, perhaps in your in your children life, perhaps in your relative life. God, I believe some shackles to fall off some of my family members. I'm believing shackles to fall off some of my nephews and my nieces. I'm believing the shackles to fall off, Lord. In the name of Jesus, where the enemy have tried to bind them up. I'm praying I'm interceding on their behalf. The shackles will fall. Thank you, Father. Come on, every head is as we stand before the Lord. And someone may be watching us by way of social media, by way of screen yard, by way of Facebook. And you may not be saved this morning, but as you watch and heard the word of God this morning, God says, you don't have to stay where you are. My, 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 my. Somebody ought to give God praise right there. I don't have to stay in the condition right here where I am. Hallelujah, Lord. I serve a God who's more than able to bring me out. I serve a God who's more than capable of turning my situation around. As you're watching us this morning, pray that the Lord has spoken to you. You might not be saved. You may haven't given your life to the Lord. And the Lord said, this is your day. Come on, come on, declare. This is my day. Hallelujah. This is my day. What the preacher said, you don't have to stay where you are. In the name of Jesus. Listen, every head is bowed, every heart is open. If you are here and you're not saved, if you're watching us by way of social media and you're not saved, let me speak to you today because you can be saved. You can be delivered from right where you are. You can be set free to be the person God made you to be. Every head is bowed, every heart is open. If you're not saved, and I want you to pray with me this morning. And if you are saved, then I most certainly want you to be praying with us father in jesus name god that individual that man that woman that boy that girl who may not be saved lord god we speak to that individual right now and i ask that individual if you just repeat after me father forgive me for my sin forgive me for my unrighteousness forgive me lord for my wrongness now god i ask you to enter into my life Fill me, Lord. Cleanse me. Wash me. Make me whole in the name of Jesus. Strengthen me, Lord. Help me to stand on your word. Father, I receive you in my, in my spirit this morning. I receive you in my heart this morning. In the name of Jesus. And I give you glory. I give you honor. I praise you. And I thank you. 
now if you are saved come on pray father i thank you i thank you for the script this morning I thank you for the God for the unwavering script this morning. I thank you for the mind you're giving me, Lord, to hold on in the midst of every situation. Thank you for the mind you're giving me, God, to not let go, God, when my flesh wants to sit there, God. You say, stand up and let the shackles fall off. God, I believe the shackles are falling off. God, I thank you for strength this morning. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for a new way of looking this morning. Open up my eyes, God. Let me see, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Father, strengthen us where we weak at. Make us strong, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we'll give you the glory on this day, God. We'll give you the praise on this day. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you. Come on, lift those hands. And come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, someone declare the shackles are falling off this morning. I refuse to continue to wear this weight around. The Bible said, let every weight and every sin which so easily beset us. Let us, oh my God. Come on, say it. I'm shaking it off this morning. Let us lay aside every weight, God, in the name of Jesus. Every situation that the enemy have tried, God, we thank you and we bless you for strength. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory and honor. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, put those hands together and tell God, thank you. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, somebody say, I'm shaking it off this morning. Just look at somebody and say, shake it off, shake it off. My God, the, the Bible says, shake it off. Lay it aside. Whatever you need to do to get it off of you. I refuse to keep taking around this dead weight. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, take your seat for a moment. Put your hands together. Let's give the Lord a praise. As you're taking your seat, certainly we magnify the Lord this morning. We praise him for his faithfulness. And to each of you, the Lord's people. We give God praise, glory, and honor for the mighty things he has done. Certainly, we thank God for our guests this morning. We thank God for the people of God who are here. Thank God for these preachers and missionaries. To each of you, the Lord's people, we give God praise, glory, and honor for you in your respective place. Uh, certainly, we thank God for those who have worshiped with us by way of social media. We thank God. I want to take just a moment before we uh, dismiss, and I want to, uh, two things. One is to uh, let you know that uh, we have our Sunday school, our Saturday school books, and our Bible study books. Deacon in the back, you see him back here. Before you leave, then make sure you get your book. Amen. And those are the ones we will be using in next in the upcoming quarter that those are the books will be uh, studying out of so certainly we praise god thank god for our guests this morning put your hands together for our guests amen thank god for mother turner in the house raise your hand mother turner for those who may not know her amen thank god for sister murphy's in the house wave your hand sister murphy amen we praise god for her being back with us been worship within us. Amen. You can stick around. We're gonna hook, throw a fishing hook on you and grab hope to you after a while. And we ain't not gonna, we're not gonna let you go, Sister Murphy. Amen. We thank God for our certainly our mother Turner, who's been such a blessing to us. Thank God for our church mother, Mother Carew. Come on, put your hands together for Mother Carew. Amen. To Mother Goodman in her absence. Amen. We praise God for the preachers. Uh, and then they absent the elder Norman, uh, who's not here, to, and his wife uh, to minister uh, James and to Sister Norma. I mean, Sister James, put your hands together. Amen. Amen to the deaconess. Amen to the uh, missionaries. Amen. Thank God for missionary Dr. Scribbling. Uh, thank God for all the men and the women of God. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Certainly we thank God for the speaker today. Come on, put your hand to God, hand together for the man of God who preached such a profound word this morning. Come on, somebody say, get up and the shackles will fall off. You ought to tell somebody this week, get up from where you are. Come out of where you are. The shackles will fall off of in the name of Jesus. Believe God, the Bible says, whom the Lord set free 
See somebody who's some Bible scholars at the Bible say, Whom the Lord set free is free indeed. Somebody say, I've been set free. No longer bound. I'm free to give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. I won't be bound when I think of his goodness and his mercy. So thank God. Put your hands together for our speaker one more time. The man of God, Elder Pickett. Amen. Just always allow the Lord to use him. Certainly we thank God. Also, let me just say for Rodney, I almost never get Rodney to say anything about Rodney, but put your hands together for our musician. Listen, we have a few minutes before we leave out. Certainly I thank God for him just being a great support to the church and we praise God. I always like to say the best for last. My sweetheart wife put together for my sweetheart wife. Amen. I enjoyed the fellowship last night as we rode back from Raleigh about uh, probably about seven, eight o'clock. We got on the road coming back to Charlotte from a, such of a powerful service on yesterday. I never heard Bishop Shear speak. Uh, well, I did. I hear him speak once at George Rogers, Evangelist George Rogers' funeral. And it was more of a, just a short eulogy. But my God, yesterday he preached. I said, I didn't know Bishop had all of that in him. That Bishop Shear preached up something on yesterday. The children of promise, my God. I invite you to pull that message up just like this one here. Get up and let the shackles fall off. Such a powerful service on yesterday. The Lord moved mightily. And we certainly we thank God for each of you, the Lord's people. Listen, and we're getting ready to uh, head out, getting ready to leave out. And we certainly we praise God for, again, keeping each of you, the Lord's people. And we certainly we thank God. Listen, as we prepare to receive our ministry of giving, also we want to make sure, saints of God, don't forget to get your your uh, study books. Amen. Listen, we're standing all over the building. Amen. Praise God. I want to thank God also for our oldest son and our daughter-in-law who is here. Amen. I thank God for this young man, the now lawyer practicing law, doing a fantastic job up in Durham. And he's charging folks up in Greensboro. And he's charging folks that for counseling, making money just because we talked to him. I said, Sandy, you're going to make money just for me talking to you? Well, but that's lawyers are, I'm telling you. And I'm telling you, I am so proud of all three of our sons. And i say something quick about Cedric and Ashley, our daughter-in-law, such a sweet young lady. I enjoyed her this morning just sitting at the table. That's why we were late. I can't blame Ashley, but I'm sitting there. She and I sitting there talking at the table. And I enjoyed my daughter and our daughter-in-law this morning just to sit in fellowship. She made coffee, and I said, all right, Ashley, I'm going to sit there. We're going to talk. And the next thing I know, I looked at the clock, and I was like, man, we're late again. But I love our daughter-in-law. I thank God for said that. I'm going to just say one last piece. He was in court, and he said he was about to, this case that he was about to, uh, thought that we could settle, but they didn't settle. It was one of his first cases. I believe his first case that he had to defend. And instead of settling, the prosecutor that wanted to charge this individual and his client was about to go to jail for the weekend. And he said he made up his mind, I'm going to step up to the plate. And he stepped up to the plate and started questioning uh, the individuals of the defense of the prosecutor. He challenged the police officer. He challenged one of their, I believe, one of their witnesses. And then Judge Rude, he called back his boss and said, well, I had to. Uh, the judge didn't, they didn't settle so. And his boss said, well, Cedric, you can't win them all. He said, what you talking about? We won this case. <laughs> yeah, he said he challenged the Judge Rude on his side. And so we're so godly proud of him. But he also had a case where it did not go so well. <laughs> but certainly I'm proud of Cedric. I'm 
proud of Craig and, and Portia and certainly to Elder Pickett, our finance advisor. If you want someone about finance, he's the man back here. The ambassador and his wife, our daughter-in-law, Sister TT, and our granddaughter. Listen, we're getting ready to go, but I'm just, I love what the Lord is doing. I was, got dressed this morning. I was thanking God.